Are you grateful for good news? Or maybe a better question to ask is, what kind of good news have you received lately? Maybe some of the examples that the kids gave are things that have actually happened to you in this past year. A new grandchild. I know there's somebody here that's gotten that news recently. Maybe good news from your doctor at your annual visit. Maybe a new relationship that has started in the past year. Maybe you applied to colleges and got into the one that you wanted. Or you were offered the job that you really hoped you would get when you spent all that time preparing for the interview. The list goes on and on of the ways that we could receive good news. Are you grateful when you receive that good news? Well, today we're going to be talking about two kinds of good news. One kind is the examples I just gave you. They're the new good news. Good news that comes about without your control and not necessarily on your timeline about some brand new good event or thing that has happened to you. The new grandbaby or baby, the new job, the new relationship. And usually when we get good news like that, nobody has to tell you to be excited. right? Like one of the kids' examples, if someone says, hey, we're having a party for you, usually that lifts your spirits all on its own just like any of that other news does. And then there's a second type of good news, and this I'm going to call the old good news, or the good news of a promise. This is perhaps most known to many of you in marriage vows, or the ways that you treat your friends, or the way that God provides for you through your work, and of course, ultimately, the gospel is this sort of old good news. That puts a little bit of a different spin on the question, are you grateful for good news? Because sometimes we take those things for granted because they're always around, right? The vows in your marriage, how many times have you said I love you to each other and maybe you weren't really paying attention when you said it or when you heard it the last time? Or you take for granted a really good friend who's always there for you when you need them because it's not a new and exciting thing, it's just a constant thing. Or when was the last time you thanked God for providing a job and a paycheck for you to provide for you all the things that you need? Even if you've done that recently, I think we can all agree we probably don't do it enough. And when was the last time that you were grateful for the gospel specifically? Or is it something that I think is true for many of us, which is it's so constant that it kind of fades into the background and we forget about it and take it for granted in our day-to-day -day lives? So I ask you again, are you grateful for good news? I hope so, because today I have some for you. Jesus is coming. Our Lord is on His way, and He's coming to save us. Now, you might be thinking that you've heard this news before. If that's your thought, you're right. You have heard it before, probably about the same time this last year, and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that. We could probably have a competition like they do at weddings for who's been married the longest, for who's seen the most Advents. And the message during all of those Advents is pretty similar. The good news that Jesus is coming to save you. So how should we respond to this second sort of good news, the kind that doesn't just automatically make you super excited because it's just there all the time? Well, our epistle reading today actually gives us a good example. Paul is has started a new church in the city of Thessalonica. And in our reading today, in his letter to the Thessalonian Christians, he's expressing gratitude for receiving good news. And in this case, his good news is actually both types at the same time. 
Now, the good news that he received is that this brand, the brand new good news, the sort of like you're having a baby or somebody's throwing you a party type of good news, is that he sent Timothy to go check on the church in Thessalonica. And he sent them because the beginning of his time there and the beginning of the church there was pretty rocky. If you go to your Bibles in Acts chapter 17, you'll read that Paul was literally driven out of the city for preaching Jesus Christ. So naturally, he was concerned about, well, what about all those new young Christians making that Christian church there? Surely they're facing the same sort of persecution. So the good news he's received is Timothy has returned from the trip, and the church in Thessalonica is doing well. Despite their sufferings and persecutions at the hands of the leaders of the city, they are remaining faithful to the things that Paul brought to them, the things of Jesus. And he is overjoyed to hear that news. Just a few verses before our reading today, Paul writes the following. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love and reported that you always remembered us kindly and longed to see us as we longed to see you. For this reason, brothers, in all our distress and affliction, we have been comforted about you through your faith. It put Paul at ease. It raised his spirits to know that these Christians were thriving despite challenging circumstances. But as I mentioned before, this isn't just the brand new good news. It also contains the old good news, the good news of promise. See, this is the good news that Paul brought to them in the first place when he was there himself before he was driven out of the city. And it is this old good news that made it so that he got the good news from Timothy, the constant goodness of God day in and day out in the lives of people facing persecutions that many of us, Lord willing, will never know. Isolation, beatings, jailing, and yet in the midst of all of those struggles, the ups and downs of life, the old good news of Jesus was there. And Timothy's report to Paul is that they are still faithful to this old good news. In other words, they still believe the promises of Jesus, despite the stuff they're going through. Now, this ought to bring us to a place of reflection. Has my joy and my faith in this old good news been tested this past year? Maybe you are tempted, as I have felt tempted, to approach the new year of promise in Advent with a shrug. Oh yeah, this story again. I've heard it so many times before, why can't we do something new and exciting? And there's a place for that. But the truth is, and you don't need really me to explain this to you, the new news that we receive isn't always good news. Sometimes you don't get good news from the doctor, you get bad news. Sometimes it is not that we have a new baby coming, but that we're struggling to conceive, and we've been trying for a long time. Sometimes rather than getting the job you were hoping for, you get let go from the job that you have. Sometimes instead of new life coming into your family, It's the loss of a loved one. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you know that that can pile up. And when those things pile up, that long-standing promise, the old good news, can fade to the background. It's harder to believe because all the things in my immediate new news cycle, if you will, is bad. Or at least it seems that way to me. Well, this is precisely the concern that Paul had for this new church. 
He was worried that the piling up of bad news in our world would choke out their faith, that they'd be overwhelmed by the cares of the world and forget the constant good news of Jesus. So he sent Timothy to check on them. And what did he find out? He found out that the good news of Jesus can withstand all of that precisely because it's the old good news. And it's kind of cool to think about it for a moment. The people we're talking about are mid-first century A.D. You have a deep connection with them. Faith in Jesus. Faith in the very same good news that sustained the brand new Christian church in Thessalonica is the same that sustains you in 2024. This is what we celebrate today. The first Sunday of a new church here, the first Sunday in Advent. Yes, the same Advent season from last year and the year before that and the year before that. The same old good news that Jesus is coming. But before your eyes glaze over and you take it for granted and you think, didn't I hear this already? I encourage you to hear it again. Hear it and think about what it really means in the context of the up and down of the new good or bad news each and every year that you receive that there is a constant good news that doesn't fluctuate up and down from year to year. Whether you're currently flying high because you've received some good news that lifted your spirits, that brought joy to your heart, or whether you're really low because you've been brought low by bad news. This promise runs through all of it, and it remains only good news. So for those gathered here today with good news, let this old good news humble you with gratitude and recognition that the blessings that you have received, they all come from Him. And the ultimate blessing is yours always in Jesus. And for those with maybe some new bad news this year, turn to Christ. When your strength fails, rely on His. When things seem confusing, temporary, or unsettled, take comfort in the promise of this old good news given to you today, because it's the same as what you were told last year. It's going to be the same that you're told next year until Jesus returns, because He is always good, and His arrival is always good news. The good news I have for you today is that your lives are always grounded in this second type of good news, the old good news, as I've been calling it. But maybe a better way to say it is faithful good news. This is the kind of good news that is reflected in the faithfulness and love in our marital relationships, in our family relationships, and in our deep friendships, a kind of constant goodness that weathers the storms and the ups and downs of life. It doesn't come and go. It remains steadfast, immovable always there, always good. So it is today, good again. As we enter a new church here, I have faithful good news to share with you. Jesus is coming. Our same God and Savior speaking the constant and faithful promises of the gospel to the Christians in Thessalonica 2,000 years ago is speaking that same message, that same good news to you. He's coming for you just like He came for them. In the midst of our lives, whether they're going up or down at any given moment, always in the context of the love of God and Jesus, 
that is immovable and always good. So today, let us give thanks. Give thanks for this always good, faithful news that our God brings to us year in and year out. Regardless of how this past year went and this next year will go, Jesus is coming. He is good. He is your Savior. He is coming for you. So I'll close today with the prayer that Paul closes our reading it from Thessalonians in. As he is encouraged by the faith of the Christians in Thessalonica, so too we ought to be encouraged by one another's faith for this always good news. Let us pray. Now may our God and Father Himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that He may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all His saints. In the name of Jesus, amen.